It's an amazing skill if you can recreate and describe texture on a painting, but it's a stumbling block for many artists, particularly when the subject they're painting is defined by a particular texture. I love painting texture, and I love finding different ways to recreate it and describe it, find different tools that help me achieve what it is I'm trying to create on the painting. Now there are two types of texture. There's actual physical texture that you can feel, and there's implied texture, the illusion of texture, which can be achieved by certain types of brush strokes like tashing, scraping away thin or thickness of your paint, or it can be achieved by using lots of different tools and materials, lots of ways to achieve lots of different textures. Some artists find their hand movements help them create texture, others find tools and materials that help create the character of the marks that they're looking for. Have a look at other artists as well who've achieved the texture you're trying to create. So for example, at the moment I'm creating a collection of oil paintings and the subject is Highland cows and they've got this long, frizzy, curly, wavy hair um, they've got the soft nose and I want to put them in a situation where there's lots of wild grasses. So I've got a number of textures to contend with there and I've taken myself out, I've walked through fields of long grasses and collected up those different types of grasses which have different types of texture and I've brought them into the studio so I can study them in a closer way. I've also looked at an artist who's inspired me with texture and that's Gustav Klimt because he was really good at dealing with pattern and texture at the same time and with the cows that I'm painting I definitely want the texture in there but I also from a design perspective I want to create a bit of a pattern as well. Anyway grabbing a book by Gustav Klimt and just looking through the different ways in which he explored texture. Let me show you. So, the portrait of Adele is a really fine example of how he used different temperatures of the colour gold to almost give like a mottled impression. So, you know, so you've got a smooth and then a rough texture of gold. And he's interrupted those different golds, different temperatures of gold across the painting. It's really effective. By using that different temperature of gold to play around with what was coming forward and what was going back and to explore how different temperatures and different surface treatments could actually create a different texture for me and give me a different characteristic because obviously the cow has got lots of texture so what I've used for the cow is a directional brush stroke going from thin to thick to thin and curving my brush stroke as it hits the board. I think when you've got a couple of textures to contend with it's really important to decide what your treatment is of each area and break your painting down into those areas. So I want to do a bit of work on this with you today. So I've got a hair texture of the cow coming forward which has a lovely softness about it and the nose it needs a treatment of um, it's almost like a fingerprint it's individual to every cow and there's um, a, a broken pattern within that texture that I'd like to achieve. Now of course I could paint that with a paintbrush a little tiny paintbrush and sit there for a few hours creating that texture but I think there's a quicker way and by quicker I don't mean cheating to create the same effect. The best results you can achieve are, are very often instantaneous and then you orchestrate what you've achieved from there. So say for example I can find something that helps me create that unique nose pattern that might be quite uniformed in one block because it's quite a big block that we're playing with here on the nose. I will then look to break it up with shading and start to blend bits of it that are softer and maybe leave some that are in high contrast. So that way you really get to understand that there's bits in detail and there's bits that are lost because if we keep the texture of all one weight, of all one value, it kind of just ends up being really flat and you lose the point of texture. So I've got my paints ready. I've got one type of texture, which is actually a non-slip kitchen drawer mat. 
I've got this texture which I think will make a really good pattern across the nose but it's too, it's too uniformed so I need to break it up somehow and find a similar but different texture maker. I might just pop over the road to the pound shop and see what they've got. So as you can see, this is my area that I'm going to section off to work on. And I've started with a base colour. It's a mid-tone, so I can take it darker and I can take it lighter on the value scale. My plan is to layer over this rubber kitchen drawer mat, stipple into the holes, so it almost acts like a stencil. Now that will create too much of a uniformed pattern for me. So then what I'd like to do, bring in the wash bag that we've just bought, and the pound sharp, stipple again over the top of that. And that will break up the pattern from being too uniformed. In fact, I might just use this as the highlighted pattern on the top of the nose. You can see from the hair that I've built it up from a medium gray to a brighter white to a white white and I've glazed and I've shaded to add more depth as well. I quite like to get my texture right before I get my colour right. Colour can be corrected at the point of shading and glazing so texture is what I'm looking for. So the same will be true here. Texture is important before colour. colour just to sort of correct any colour mistakes I've made there but in terms of texture yes I've nearly got it I might do another layer so from the top creating texture is going to elevate your painting and you will practice the skill of finding different tools to try and describe the forms the shapes that then have the characteristics of the texture you want so the six stages, find examples of the texture, either go out for a walk or find an artist who's achieved it before and interrogate, research, how did they do it. Number two, source tools. When I say tools, look for unusual things that will help you create the shapes and the blobs of paint that help you describe texture. It might be something you find in your kitchen, like a spatula, an old kitchen knife, an old toothbrush. You might want to get one of these scalpels and scratch away for texture. You might, as we did today, go and buy yourself a cheapy wash bag and then use it as a stencil. The third stage is to section areas. So if you remember, I sectioned the nose as a particular area of texture for me today. I don't want to apply the same technique all the way over the cow because each different texture will require a different method. Then I started with a base colour, something that has a mid-tone so I can either go darker or I can go lighter. I then layered and layered. Be patient with your layering. I know some of you are not patient. <laughs> and then glaze or shade to correct your colour. And that's your six stages of creating texture. materials to help you imprint texture or stipple texture. Texture, texture. How many times am I going to say texture? I'm going to help you create texture. Number one is... You know, Gustav, me and Gustav, on first name terms and all that. <laughs> Creating texture 